There are times when it's best to buy the latest and greatest piece of technology, especially if there's a huge performance increase over the previous generation. And then there are times when a product a generation older offers the better value. But what about two generations? In today's video, we are going to be talking about the LG C1 OLED TV, which I bought primarily to color grade movies and films. So my perspective is as a cinematographer and a colorist, but I also use the TV for gaming and content consumption. So if you're watching this video in 2023, you're probably wondering if the C1 is still a good investment, if you should opt for the C2 or even wait for the C3. And here's the bottom line. The LG C series has one problem that all of the panels are amazing. You see, the C2's problem is that the C1 currently exists, and the C3's problem will be that the C2 exists. As the newer panels are released, the price of the older panels becomes far more compelling. So what this is really gonna come down to for you is your budget when buying this TV. But let's break that down a little bit more. When we're looking at the details, it's actually going to come down to how much brightness you want. You see, the LG C1 has the lowest brightness out of the bunch. However, the C1, C2, and C3 can all display brightness levels well above 100 nits, which is where we master standard dynamic range content. After calibration, my LG C1 is set to 28 out of 100% OLED brightness. So this means when you're watching standard dynamic range content such as primetime TV shows, YouTube series, or Apple TV, anything like that, you are going to be fine with the LG C1. Now, there are times when you may be watching a movie that is meant to be watched in a darker environment. That is sometimes the artist's intention. And you really won't have a problem unless the sun is blaring directly on the TV. But this is really where room control comes in because that's gonna be important regardless of what TV you have, being able to control that room lighting. Now, where you will see a difference slightly is going to be in HDR performance. The LG C1 peaks at about 750 nits and the LG C2 peaks at around 800 nits. And I would expect the C3 to be the same. I don't expect a big shift in panel technology, but let's say that it has 850 nits for all intents and purposes. You really aren't going to notice the difference if you're the average consumer unless these TVs are next to each other. Now, where you may care about this 100 nit difference is if you're a creator using this TV to create HDR content. That is where you're going to really want to be closer to a thousand nits. However, my personal opinion is that the 100 nit difference between the C1 and the possibly 850 nit C3 is going to be negligible because of the infinite contrast ratio. If you really want 100 nits, my advice is to wait for the release of the G3, which is going to have incredible brightness for OLED technology. Also keep in mind that all of my LG panels are calibrated for both standard dynamic range and high dynamic range to make sure that we're getting the technically correct color that's supposed to have happen for these type of formats. Moving on into the specifics of the LG C1, let's talk about the input and output. The back of the TV has four HDMI 2.1 inputs with HDCP 2.2 compatibility. One of the HDMI inputs also supports eARC and all of the HDMI ports support 4K at 120 Hertz. In addition to HDMI, there are also inputs for an ethernet cable, an optical digital audio out, three USB 2.0 ports, and cable in. This is a perfect segue into PC gaming. And I just have to say gaming on the C1, regardless of PC or console, has been amazing. The OLED panel and the deep blacks are simply amazing. The G-Sync and the game optimization modes add to that enjoyable experience. And with a one millisecond response time, you are always on top of your game. Now, with that being said, because all of my panels have been color calibrated, it, I don't really have the problem with what some people have reported to be as crushed blacks. But if you do in your experience, the game optimization mode on the TV allows you to adjust the black level for a more perfect gaming experience. Moving on from gaming, let's talk about my creators out there. Now, the main reason that I bought the TV was for my color grading work. And I actually plan on releasing a video later on talking about how I calibrated the TV, the hardware that I put into the computer to actually get a clean feed out and everything I wish was simply out there in one place when I got the TV. So hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for that. But simply put, 
Grading on an OLED panel, especially the C1, has been amazing. It's one thing to have a beautiful display, and it's a completely different thing to have a color accurate display. All of my Delta E color deviations are less than one in both standard dynamic range and high dynamic range. And more importantly, since grading on the LG C1, I have found that my work is far more consistent across all of the other devices that people may watch my content on, such as iPhones, Samsung phones, Samsung TVs, MacBooks, and regular TV monitors as well. This is a smart TV and it has tons of AI picture options and AI sound options. Now I chose not to use those because of the work that I do. So I can't speak on them too much in depth, but I can say this. The C2 has a better advantage when it comes to upscaling with artificial intelligence to a higher resolution. However, I feel the C1 has better picture quality because of the more in-depth AI motion menu that the C1 has over the C2 and most likely the C3 as well. This gets rid of some of the stuttering that can happen on OLED panels and introduces what some people call the soap opera effect. And if you don't know what that is, then you're probably already used to it anyway. The AI sound features are also something that I have not used out of the box. I've listened to them and I feel like the AI sound does improve the out of the box speakers, but I have a studio sound system for my video editing work. So I tend to use that as well. And moving on from the smart TV features, let's talk about what you're most likely actually going to be doing on the TV, which is spending time in WebOS and watching content. WebOS is the operating system on the TV, and thankfully it's aesthetically pleasing because that's where you're gonna spend most of your time because it's your central hub for getting to YouTube, Netflix, Apple TV, Hulu, Disney Plus, etc. Now, consuming content, watching movies, everything on this TV is simply beautiful. As a matter of fact, the LG OLED ruined my experience with other TVs so much that I made it my mission to replace every panel in this house with LG panels. We still have a few more to go, but that is my mission. It's hard to go wrong with any LG OLED panel, including the C series. And I believe that the C1 is a future proof and a smarter investment at the time currently. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I really love bringing you guys more diversified content this year, including tech. Can't wait to talk about filmmaking, but give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications. If you have not, follow me on social media. The links are in the description down below, as well as the YouTube fam. Links are in the same place. Leave me a comment and my beautiful people. Now more than ever in this crazy world, if you're ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just want to give up on life, remember, Every day, airplanes take off against the wind. Keep climbing, stay inspired, and as always, stay fabulous. I'm Sydney. I will see you beautiful people next time. Peace out.